Well hello again and welcome to the VK6S Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Now, I put a wire antenna up the other day and I decided to use steel, uh, steel wire or steel rope I think it's called um, from the local hardware shop 2 mil steel wire and the reason I did that was um, the, the antenna is going to, well it is actually at the moment, it's up between uh, uh, two or three trees and as the trees move around um, so the wire moves around as it runs through the insulators and I think there's some potential fracture points there so I thought okay we'll use uh, or I'll use steel wire rather than copper wire now this stuff here is it going to focus? is my money well spent on this camera? Uh, this is the 2mm um, steel wire 316 steel uh, from the local hardware shop 2mm in diameter very tough stuff, this will run through the insulators and it can move around a lot and um, it's never going to break basically. Now I've heard people say that's all very well but how do you connect to a steel wire? Um, well it's quite easy actually because what you do is you get a uh, you get a swage of the appropriate size so a swage is just like a uh, well, it's like a heavy duty crimp really. You can see you can get two two mil cables in there and they run through and then you crush this and this. You can either use a proper tool to do it or you can use a cold chisel. If you've got an old transformer you can sit it on top of, get a cold chisel um, and just hit it uh, hit it with a club hammer. Uh, that, that, will, uh, that will do the same thing. So you know you get one of these cold chisel, you put it on there, once you've got the wires in there of course on a hard surface, give it a thump, turn it over, give it another thump, stick it in there, give it another thump and um, you'll never pull it apart. But uh, people have said how on earth do you connect to the steel wire? Well it's actually pretty easy because what you do is you get your swage and you put your stainless steel wire through it through one of those tunnels in the swage like that so that uh, the insulator could be uh, a fair distance from there you know foot, two foot, whatever so it would be secured uh, by the insulator and then you get a bit of 2 mil copper wire and put that in the other side of the swage like that so that's a nice neat fit like that and then you just swage it together and then you've got your copper connector your copper wire uh, for soldering to you know put a banana plug on it put a, a loop connector on it or whatever whatever you want and uh, that will be a that will be a nice uh, a nice solid joint for it um, no problem at all um, <clears throat> you'll see quite a few of these um, people that make uh, commercial HF antennas, these ones that you string up in the bush or wherever, I think they sell quite a lot of them in Africa and those sort of places, they'll be uh, stainless steel, they'll use the stainless steel wire and uh, usually they'll, they'll use a folded dipole arrangement so that um, uh, with the terminating resistor so it doesn't need any matching at all and um, yeah, you know, these things work uh, work reasonably well. They're they're not as efficient um, as uh, as matched antennas or tuned antennas, but you can throw it up, and they do and they do work. So they do reasonably well. When you buy this stuff, excuse me, it's because I'm leaning over the camera. When you buy this stuff, it comes on a roll. Um, two mil uh, steel rope, and it tells you there's three different types. Um, there's the uh, the 19 and the well, there's the green one, there's the amber, <laughs> the amber one, and there's the red one, and they go from least flexible to most flexible. Um, I've got the middle one, which is semi flexible. Uh, it comes on uh, comes on these comes on these 30 meter rolls. And as soon as you take the wrapping off, of course, it all springs out all over the place. 
Um, but uh, like, a, like a rabid gazelle. So I'll have to uh, I'll have to wind that back up. But it reckons that this is semi-flexible. This stuff. Um, you know, personally, I think that's. Yeah. I think that's more than flexible enough. Um, yeah, it's hardly uh, it's hardly like trying to bend an iron bar. So, if you want a wire antenna, and you've been wondering about whether or not to use steel, um, use steel. Um, I can honestly say that um, um, you know I would not have known that I was using a steel wire antenna when uh, I strung it up, matched it, and. It seemed to work just as well as the uh, uh, the copper wire I had occupying the same space just uh, a couple of years ago, same trees. Um, and uh, as I say, you know, I was running the same power, it was only 50 watts, as uh, the guys I was talking to, and sending <coughs> I was sending the same re same reports as I was receiving. So um, technically, if you wanted to do the math, um, because there's more resistance in the wire. You're going to have less of a, uh, a magnetic field around it, an electromagnetic field around it, but you know you probably need um, laboratory equipment to actually measure the difference between the two. I suspect. Uh, okay, well, hope you found that interesting. As always, thanks for watching. I'll uh, catch you next time.